Hi, I am Ajit Khan, AWS Certified and Kubernetes Certified DevOps Engineer and welcome to this series of AWS Service-Based Scenarios for Solution Architect Exam. So in this series of video, we will talk about different services of AWS and the corresponding scenarios of those services which can be asked in the exam. So I have curated certain scenarios based on different services like S3, networking, EC2, etc. And this is the very first video of that series and it is about S3. So let's get started. We will cover what is S3 and what are its use cases and those use cases can be asked in the exam. S3 stands for simple storage service. It can store static files key value store for big file or it can be used for website hosting. So any scenarios where you are asked which AWS service is to be used if you want to store static files or key value store for big files or if you want to do website hosting for static websites. The answer will be S3. Now there are different categories of S3. S3 standard is general purpose. It can be used for big data analytics, mobile and gaming applications, or content distribution. Another one is S3 standard infrequent access. So as by its name, it is used when data is accessed infrequently. It could be a data store for disaster recovery or backups. So the backups or any data which is not accessed frequently can be stored in this category of S3. Next one is S3 one zone infrequent access. It can be used for storing secondary backup copies of on-premise data or storing data you can recreate. So any kind of data which can be recreated or which is not accessed frequently or which can be recreated, those kind of data can be stored in S3 one zone infrequent access. Another category is S3 intelligent tiering. So as by its name, this category is intelligent enough because it uses built-in machine learning and artificial intelligence to determine the most cost-effective storage class and then automatically moves your data to the appropriate tier. So the scenario in the exam could be which kind of S3 category or tier should be used when you are not sure about your data, whether that data will be used frequently or infrequently and you want to be cost effective, so which tier you will use? So the answer would be S3 intelligent tiering. Next category is S3 Glacier. As by its name Glacier, it is used for cold data that is being used to archive the data. And it is low cost storage and used for archiving the data. Any data which you are not going to use and you just want to keep it just in case if a request comes for that data, then you can retrieve it from S3 Glacier, but that will require some time. It will not be instant. So any kind of data which you want to archive and want to put it on low cost, for example, if you are doing centralized logging and you want six month old logs should be archived because those might not be any use, but just in case those logs are of any transactions, then in future, if a case is raised, and if you want to have a look at those logs, then you can retrieve it, but there will be very less chances of it, which is why you are moving it to Glacier. So the cost will be very low. Another category is S3 Deep Glacier. This is the lowest cost of S3 storage where retrieval can take 12 hours. If you are okay to get back your data in more than 12 hours, then you will choose S3 Deep Glacier. So S3 Deep Glacier as by its name, it is a high level of glacier storage where retrieval will take more longer time. And this is the lowest cost S3 storage. Now let's talk about S3 Outpost. So S3 Outpost is majorly for on-premise when you want to have S3 related or S3 kind of service available for your on-premise infrastructure, then you can use S3 Outpost and it will deliver object storage to your on-premise AWS Outpost environment. It will be completely managed by AWS. Patching, updating, everything will be taken care by AWS itself. So the scenario could be 
which S3 storage category or tier you should use when you want to store data in on-premise infrastructure and want to utilize S3 based features in that case S3 outpost is the answer. So this is a diagram which will help you to understand different S3 storage category based on the data access frequency. So if as the data is required to be accessed more frequently then you will use S3 standard and if the data is very infrequent then you will use Glacier Deep Archive. So this is the hierarchy S3 standard should be used when data is required more frequently then S3 intelligent tiering then standard infrequent access then one zone infrequent access then S3 glacier instant retrieval then glacier flexible retrieval formerly known as S3 glacier and then S3 glacier deep archive now let us talk about S3 encryptions so encryption could be of two type in transit and at rest encryption is simply encoding the data so that nobody else who don't have access can read it with their naked eyes so encryption is necessary for security so there are two ways where data can reside one is actually residing in s3 storage or when the data is requested there will be a request to s3 and s3 will respond with the data so this request and response will have data in flight so this is what in transit mean that means the data is on the fly and encryption should be there during the request response over the network and at rest is encryption of the data when it is actually residing in S3. Now when we talk about encryption we have seen encryption could be in transit or at rest. Now when we are doing encryption there could be different ways of encrypting S3 object. One of them is SSE S3. It encrypts S3 object using keys handled and managed by AWS. So whenever you are encrypting any data, you will require a key with which you can encrypt the data. So with this SSE S3, the keys will be handled and managed by AWS. Next is SSE KMS. So as you know, AWS has its own key management service known as KMS. So the keys used for encryption can be managed by the very own service of AWS that is key management service. So this is the second way and the third way is SSEC. This is when you want to manage your own encryption keys. So you will be responsible for managing the encryption keys required to encrypt the data. Now let us talk about S3 multipart. So there could be a scenario when you are asked that that the files you want to upload to S3 is quite large. So how you can upload it? So when the file size is quite large, then you can use S3 multipart to upload the file. Recommended files is greater than 100 MB and you must use multipart when the size of the file is greater than 5 GB. Next is S3 lifecycle management. So the data is uploaded to S3. Now for next three months, the data could be frequently accessed, but after three months, it will become old and might not be required that frequently. So it should be either moved to different S3 storage tier or it should be deleted. So here we are talking about the life cycle of whatever we are storing in S3. S3 offers life cycle management in which it automatically moves to different storage tiers. So whenever there is a question that you are required to move data to different storage tier, after several months of use, then what kind of S3 feature you can utilize? In that case, the answer is S3 lifecycle management. Now let us talk about S3 lifecycle configuration example. So in exam, there could be a scenario when you are told like after 30 days of object creation state and then after 60 days of object creation, it should be moved to some other tier and after 46, 465 days of object creation, it should be moved to some other tier and after 30 days the object should be accessible within x amount of time and after 60 days the data should be accessible within y amount of time and so on 
So in this kind of scenario, you will be asked which S3 storage tier you will use. So here in this example, since we want to access the data immediately, we should store it in S3 standard. And when data is 30 days old, we are moving it to S3 standard in frequent access. And then after 60 days of object creation, it is being moved to S3 glacier and so on. And ultimately after 465 days, data is not required at all. Then we are deleting the object. So this whole cycle is being automated using S3 lifecycle configuration where we don't need to manually move the data to different storage tier and this will save cost for us as well. Now let us talk about S3 pre-signed URLs. As by its name, it is a URL, a link to the object in your S3, which is pre-signed. Pre-signed means that URL is signed or authorized to access that particular object. So this is used when you want to access the object for a valid duration of time. You might not want to give someone full access to your S3 or lifetime access to an object in your S3. In that case, you can generate pre-signed URLs, which will be valid for certain amount of time. And you can share that URL with a given person. Another important S3 feature is S3 transfer acceleration. This is being used when you want to move data faster over long distances. For example, for mobile and web application uploads and downloads, data exchange with trusted partners, S3 cross-region replication. Although S3 is a global service, but the data could be physically at a certain location and you want the data to be available at low latency in few regions, in that case, you can enable cross-region replication so that data is available in different region at low latency. So this is all for this video. All the best for your exam.